Um, I'm here chatting with Dee Alexander, who's visiting us from Chicago. She's in Sydney for the Sydney International Women's Jazz Festival 2014, and she's the headline act. Um, I've been reading interviews, and I noticed Chicago Jazz Magazine from 2009 sort of billed you as a newcomer. Um, but the other day you said there were no overnight successes, and I was just, you know, wondering if you could give us a little snapshot into the path that's led to you where you are with two five-star downbeat reviews and, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's been such a, it's been such a blessing. Yeah, I've been doing this for, for quite a while, and uh, I want to say over 20 years I've been doing this, and in and around Chicago, so I've had the great opportunity to work with the Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians with my mentor, like Henry Huff. Then I also had the great opportunity of working 10 years with Mr. Ken Chaney, uh, who also made his transition a couple of years ago. And to also work with, oh, I've worked with a plethora of musicians in Chicago, Ernest Dawkins, uh, New Horizons, also, um, Douglas Ewart's Inventions, and then I start, I have my own group, I have like the Evolution Ensemble, and I have the D. Alexander Quartet. So I have been doing this for quite some time, and now starting to receive accolades from around the world, which is really humbling, and, and I'm really, really happy about all of that. We've had the opportunity to go to the Umbria Jazz Festival in Italy, also, we performed at uh, Santa Aresi in Sardinia. Um, we've done the Made in Chicago series in Poznan, Poland. Um, and it's just been wonderful, the, the love and, and support that I've been receiving. Finally. <laughs> and well deserved it. Yes, yeah. thank you, yeah. thank you. And did you always know that you wanted to sing? Oh yeah, ever since I was a child, I've always loved music. And, well, one day I said, well, you know, people ask me, well, what do you want to do? Oh, I want to be a professional secretary. Yeah, what does that mean now? You know, but <laughs> that pays the bills. You know, you have your insurance and everything. But my, my roots have always been deeply uh, placed in music and in jazz, and especially being influenced by some of the greatest jazz vocalists, thanks to my mother for having that great music around as a child, uh, playing Sarah, Ella, Billy, Nina, Dinah, and also the great musicians, John Coltrane, um, Eddie Jefferson, Miles Davis, Dexter Gordon. Um, but I've always loved the stories that those great musicians, the uh, great singers told. So I just wanted to tell people stories. Okay, and you also mentioned that as well as being influenced by great vocalists, that musicians and especially horn players mm -hmm. have been your greatest influence. Mm -hmm. So how does that translate into your singing? That well, I believe it, it really assisted me in terms of vocal improvisation. Um, I would, uh, especially working with Light Henry Huff, who, I, as I said earlier, was my mentor, and he had a group called Breath. And in that group, I was the, I want to say I was the fourth instrument, basically. I, I sang a lot of vocalese. Very few lyrical, I mean, there were some lyrics, but very few. And so that's where I was able to hone in my craft in terms of improvisation, thanks to him. And mm -hmm. um, he was an influence, Henry Huff, like Henry Huff was an influence in more ways than just musically. So how has his influence and mentoring um, impacted on your lifestyle and your approach to music? Well, because he was, he was also a doctor of nephropathy and acupuncture, he was a philosopher, and he was a very positive and forward-thinking individual, and we talked Oh my God, every day we would talk in the middle of the night and he was always lifting me up. He always kept me on a positive path. Uh, even when he got ill, he knew that he wasn't going to live to be an old man. Then in turn, him teaching me how to be a positive individual, I in turn had to give that to him because of his health uh, crisis that he was dealing with. So, and I, I still instill that every day to just be a positive individual and positive thinking and I put that into my music and into my lifestyle as well. And for women, it's potentially more challenging in the world of jazz. Mm -hmm. And um, the, you have to be strong and maybe a little bit of tough. What sort of challenges do you think women might face? Then? 
I think that what women may face uh, basically is, first of all, the, the challenge of if you have children um, and family, that can be a big challenge. But once the kids get a little older and they understand what you're doing and they're on their own way with their lives, then it kind of can open the door up for you in terms of uh, traveling and performing. Um, and this is a male-dominated um, industry, of course, but I think that if you know what you're doing uh, and you're good at what you're doing, you will gain respect from your peers, male and female. And your music is um, filled with joy and mm -hmm. emotion mm -hmm. and a love for people. Mm -hmm. um, and that grasping, I mean, embracing life, is that, that's the way you like to live? Absolutely, absolutely. I think that it's, you know, we're just beings on this planet. You know, I'm just here trying to fulfill my destiny and um, I just want to spread joy, spread love, and spread good news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sort of jumping back a bit, but Chicago, that has such an incredible musical history. Mm -hmm. um, how has that shaped or influenced your musical thinking? Oh, it's I've had uh, great support from my musical peers, and we've studied the history of the music of Chicago, which makes me even prouder. And that's why, uh, like Diana Washington, she's from Chicago. And I just would like to be, hopefully be in the line of one day when I'm gone, they'll say Dee Alexander, she was a Chicagoan, and to have my place in history along with the, with the rest. And you've also mentioned there's a lot of great people doing things for jazz in Chicago. Oh yes, there's uh, Lauren Deutsch of the Jazz Institute of Chicago. And um, there's also the High Park Jazz Society. There, they have um, they support local artists every Sunday to have performances where artists can come in and hone their crafts. Um, there's we have the the um, the Office of Special Events in Chicago, which has, which features great performances in Millennium Park. Uh, and the mayor, he's a, he is an advocate for the arts there as well. Uh, so they're, they're great people, they're doing great things for the arts in Chicago. And um, we're on this all too fleeting visit, we're hearing one, we're getting one glimpse of your musical spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a diverse array of projects and musical styles. Mm -hmm. And this time we're very lucky that your musical director, Miguel, yes. is able to accompany you. But I'd love to hear about the, the diversity and the range of, of, of works that you've actually... Oh my goodness. Uh, actually, I, I, I mentioned to you earlier that I've done a project um, uh, with the music of Jimi Hendrix and James Brown. And you dance. Oh my God, yes, I did dance. <laughs> and I was exhausted afterwards, but anyway, that's a whole other story. Um, when I brought that project to my musicians, they thought I had lost my mind. Um, I said, you all have got to trust me on this. I think that this will go over well if we take it apart and put it back together again, rearrange it, because we're, it's just an interpretation. So what we did was, I can't take credit for everything. I just, I just told them this, this is an idea of mine and let's do it. And they were like, is she crazy? Has she lost her mind? But once we did it and put it together and it has grown and grown and grown and we've traveled around the world and back with this project. That's just one. Um, I also have uh, an opportunity. I've worked with a couple of orchestras. I work with the Chicago Jazz Orchestra, which I have the opportunity to perform, hopefully for the president on De in December at uh, the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., the Kennedy Center Honors. And this weekend, uh, November 14th, I'm performing with another orchestra, the Chicago Jazz Philharmonic, which is conducted by Orbert Davis, and they're celebrating their 10th year anniversary. And he reminded me that I actually did the first performance with them 10 years ago at the Chicago Jazz Festival. So that is also a, a great opportunity. And then I work with Douglas Eward and his group Inventions, which basically is based on improvisational creative music. And I've also worked with another phenomenal musician, Ernest Dawkins, and he has a group called the Chicago 12. And we've done a couple of operas, if you will. He did a tribute to Nelson Mandela. He's also done a tribute to Fred Hampton, and he's done a tribute to Emmett Till, 
you know, it's called Until Emmett Till. And very, very challenging music because he had me singing with horns, you know, with the horns, and I was the only vocalist. But when I wasn't actually singing, I was singing the horn lines with the alto section, which was very challenging, but very good for me at the same time. So it's just been wonderful to be in a position, and it's very humbling that these musicians and these situations call upon me because I guess I can do the job, and I'm very, very grateful to be a part of all of that in Chicago. And I'm very happy to be here <laughs> in Sydney. It's just been wonderful. I've had such a wonderful opportunity uh, to meet great people, to work with Tim Firth and Brett Hurst. Oh my God, they are just dolls. And uh, thank you for allowing me to bring Miguel along because it's just the icing, it's icing on the cake. Well, thank you so much. We really hope that we get an opportunity to um, see and hear more of your projects in the future. Definitely. Thank I you. look forward to it.